Hello, this is Anna. In this video, I'm going to go through the major um, features of the software, and I will slowly mention almost everything that you will need to know and the important parts of the vector software. So I'm going to start off by clicking the vector expert icon on my desktop. And the new icon is going to take a little bit longer to download. Maybe for some computers, it takes a minute for some a little bit less. Um, if it takes a little bit longer, don't worry about it. Now, at this point, first you want to make sure that the headset is connected to the back of the device and that it is also placed on either your head or the head of your client. Um, and then also before we go into the software and do anything important in there, go to the Customize and if there is any language that you would like to change, Go ahead and choose that language and allow it to translate and make sure that your speed here is placed on medium. And then at that point, everything else is fine. You don't need to touch or do anything else in here. So I'm going to exit and click on the start button. Now, at this point, when you get to this card index, which is what this page is. This is the card index page. You have two options. The first option is you have a new client, so you have to create a new card. The second option is you are going to select a card from a client you have already scanned for someone that's not a new client, but you have already seen them. So if you want to select a client, you're just going to go in the list and find their name. If you don't want to select, but you want to create a new card, you will go to new card and put their information in there. Okay. So in order for the system to allow you to move on, you have to put in their name, their birth date, or just the year. And that way it'll, it'll put up their age and then the gender. And then at this point, the system will allow you to move forward by clicking OK. When you click OK, you're going to be on this page. And this page is more useful if you're trying to get clues and you want to allow the system to choose for you what organs to scan. If you want to be the one choosing the organs to scan, then you can skip this page altogether and just go on to proceed. When you click proceed, there's a few options here that you should be aware of. First is that if you notice right here, it says 236. So what that means is that right now, the list consists of 236 body parts. There's a button here called research type. If you click on it, there's three options normal, detailed, and scientific. So if you click on normal, this number 236 is going to change. So you see that it's now 211. If you click on scientific, that is going to be the largest list that is available. And that's about 760, 758 organs. So normally, sometimes if you want to start with this, you can start with the larger. If you don't want to spend so much time looking at tissues and cells, then you can go ahead and start with normal or detailed. The other button here that you can be aware of is called manual choice and then this setup button. When you click on setup, you're going to no notice that there's four options, male, woman, boy, and girl. Um, and what this is for is basically for you to manually choose the organs that you want for each um, person. So for a male, for a boy, for a woman, for a girl. And that way, when someone comes in, instead of going through this whole list, which could be very time consuming, you have the option of just choosing male or female. Um, and then from there, it will basically just go ahead and get you ready to scan instead of having to go through this list and pick every single time. So I will choose a few organs right now to scan and then we can go from there. 
body of woman is an important organ to scan if you are going to be interested in looking at the aura otherwise please choose major organs if you do all of the major organs you will get a lot of the health problems answered and so a lot of people ask well this list is really long how do i know what to choose and basically you're just going to go through all of the major organs and if you aren't sure what those major organs are go ahead and email me and i will make sure to make you a video and i will explain which major organs you should be scanning but when i say major organs i mean the intestine the stomach the thyroid glands the blood cells the the kidneys the liver the lungs um you know anything that you can think of as a big and major organ in the body so i'm going to start right here and just scan these few Okay, so just a quick reminder that when you are scanning someone, make sure that the headset is on their head with the left wire or the, the part of the headset that has a wire coming out of it needs to be on the left side. If you're not sure what it is, look closely on your headset and it'll say left or right. You cannot scan anyone without the headset not being on their head. If you do, then the analysis isn't accurate. So if you want to have accurate analysis, you gotta make sure that the headset is on their head. Now, when it's finished, you're going to see all of the body parts that you've scanned, which are just right here. And from this point, we want to go into analysis. So to go to analysis, you have to go back and exit to the card index. So click on the card index and then again the list will be here and anything that is in red is going to be the problem areas everything that's in green is not necessarily coming up as a problem area now these energy levels may or may not be correct i just ate maybe 10 minutes ago and so if the energy levels aren't you know if they're not looking good or if they look too good then you don't necessarily want to trust these at all times if your client does everything that you ask them meaning if they don't eat two hours before they see you if they don't have any coffee or tea if they don't drink alcohol if they take off their keys and cell phones out of their pockets take off watches any large jewelry if they follow all of these instructions then yes the energy levels ideally will be correct however you cannot put all of your hope into these colors if the color is green it doesn't necessarily mean that the intestine is really healthy you still want to go through these and make sure that they're healthy so what i will do is i will start at the one that's red and i'm going to do some analysis on that one now in order to do analysis you click on the image and then click on this click on the graph or the test button either one and then you get to this main analysis page now nothing on this page works without choosing a topic so the first thing you have to do is choose a topic either pathomorphology if you're looking at disease or microorganisms 
if you're looking for <clears throat> bacteria, viruses, parasites, things like that. So I will start with microorganisms. And the first thing I do is I look at these numbers right here. A normal number, or I'm going to call them coefficients, is 1.2. Anything that is above 1.2 is irrelevant and that does not have anything to do with this person. Because what happens is that when you are getting scanned, or when your client is getting scanned, the frequency of their organ is being compared to the frequencies of all of the diseases and microorganisms and everything in the database. So the closest frequency is going to have the lowest number. So the closest frequency is going to have the lowest number. So at this point, it looks everything looks normal, but there are a few buttons that we are going to click just to make sure that there's really nothing going on there. The first one is called Adjust All. When I click on Adjust All, I'm looking for the biggest drops in number. So a good example is if you notice this mucor, which is a fungus, goes from 1.6, which is way above normal, which looks good, drops all the way to 0 0.7, which indicates mucor or this fungus is probably and most likely is in the blood cells. Now, that was only one step. The next important step is called auto model. And by clicking on this, you're basically prioritizing. You're asking the system to tell you which of these are going to be the most in major problems. And you look for the infinity sign. And you look for the infinity sign. The infinity sign points out the problem that has the lowest or the biggest um, effect on the, on the body or on the blood cells. So if it has an infinity sign, then it's the most important. So at this point, we've done three things. We looked at the coefficients, these numbers here. We adjusted, which means that we clicked on the adjustment, which does a, a second evaluation of the coefficients. And if anything is missed, then it'll bring it to the top, which in this case, there were many. And then the third thing we did was clicked on auto model, which brought up red dots and the infinity sign, which points to the most and major problem. Now, it seems like our analysis is pretty sure here. I mean, we have a fungus that shows up. We have a few other problems that the red dot shows up and points to. But at this point, we are still not 100% sure of the analysis. So to be 100% sure, so to be sure of the analysis, we have to do one final step, and that is called Vigetto Test C. What Vigetto Test does is it takes this microorganism and it runs it against the blood cells to see if it will strengthen or weaken the blood cells. If it strengthens the blood cells, then it means that the immune system is taking care of it and it's not a problem. If it weakens the blood cells, then it means that the blood cells are not handling this problem correctly and it confirms the fact that yes, the problem does exist in the blood cells. So we're going to do that now. I will start and do Vigetto tests for actually all of the three red dots that came up here. So you have to wear the headset. Make sure that the headset is on your client's head. Highlight any of the red dot problems and then click on Vigetto test C. Okay, so it looks like it didn't do anything, but it actually did. And I will show you how to look at the results after. What I'm going to do is run the rest of the Vigetto tests and then look at them all together. Mm -hmm. 
and then one more okay so to view the results of what I just did with the Vigetto test I'm going to click on analysis plus now analysis plus is the page that you are going to use to do all kinds of comparing looking at the results of um, therapies it's going to be the page that you use to look at anything that you want to compare so what you have to do is just click on out of research and it's going to give you a strengthening or weakening result at the bottom if you notice the check mark is on the blood cells which is the original blood cell scan that I did and the highlight not the check mark not the check mark but the highlight is on the blood cells mucor which is the fungus that I just did the Vigetto test on so if I want to see the results of others I can simply highlight them and look at the results so let's start with mucor it says strengthening reaction 60%. If it's strengthening, then it means the immune system is taking care of it and that this is not in the blood cells. This one is also strengthening by 52. So again, it denies the analysis. So it means that it is not present in the blood cells. And again, this one is strengthening. So neither of these are the problem in the blood cells. And I know that because the blood cells are strengthening despite the fact that the frequency is of these microorganisms. If it strengthens at any point, it means that that is not the problem in the blood cells. So let's exit. And now I'm going to go from microorganisms to pathomorphology. And if you see that it's black, just go ahead and undo it because you always want to start fresh. So again, the first step is to look at the coefficients. We're looking for anything below 0, 1.2. And these are at the top already below 1.2. So that gives us an idea or that tells us that there is a problem somewhere with these. The second step is adjust all. And the third step is the auto model. And again, I have red dots next to there's two anemias. And when you click on etalon description, it can give you description of something that you are not sure of. Like this word here, I wasn't sure what that means. So I clicked on description and it tells me what this is. Hereditary anemia marked by abnormal formation of chains of proteinic part hemoglobin molecule. So basically, it's another part of, it's another type of anemia that has to do with hemoglobin. So the third step, as you remember, is going to be Vigetto test. So I will run the Vigetto test on everything with the red dot. Okay, now this one. And then one more. Okay, now to see the results, I'm going to go to Analysis Plus and then click either Outer Research until I find the one I'm looking for or just highlight it. So this one is strengthening by 27. This one is strengthening by 19. And this one is strengthening by 37. So they're all strengthening. If you notice, these first microorganisms are strengthening by a lot, 60 and 50%. However, these other ones are strengthening by 19 and 27%. So not strengthening by so much 
but they are strengthening a little bit. So I'm going to click out of here and actually exit and exit again and choose another organ to look at. I will go to my intestine because I've already looked at my blood cells. Now I'm going to go to the intestine and click on the image, click on the graph, and then start with microorganisms and do the three steps. Adjust all and add a model. So a lot of these, actually all of them, are above normal. So I will just disregard and go to the next one. Because remember, the first thing we look at is the coefficients. We're looking for anything below 1.2. So adjust all, out to model, and then I can do a Vigetto test C to test and see if it'll strengthen or weaken. And then I will do the same for the other one. <clears throat> and now to look at the results, I will go to Analysis Plus and just click Out to Search, and it'll find it for me. See that this time it says weakening by 5%. If it is weakening, then it confirms the analysis that I have dyskinesia of colon. And now I'll click Add a Research again, and it's weakening by 9%, so it also confirms this one also. So I will exit here, and now that I know that these two are confirmed, which means that they are coming up as problems, I will put them into my notes by highlighting them and then clicking on In Epricasis. And I will do that to both of them to place them in my notes. And if you want to see your notes, you can go to Epricasis, and then make sure you check mark this print description box and then go to report to and then you can see that the notes are right there so the notes in, are nice and organized it tells you the system the intestine the pathogens and the two problems that we confirmed were in the body there's also another thing you can do is you can write your own notes anything that you want to and then see the results in report number one with your actual notes. So now that I've found that these are problems and I actually confirmed them, there's another thing you can do and you can actually make a remedy for this problem. So dyskinesia of the colon came up as a problem and now what I can do is make a remedy by highlighting it and clicking on reprinter and when I go to reprinter, notice at the top it says dyskinesia of the colon. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a remedy using the cup, the cup that comes with your system. You plug it into the back of the device. You can put a glass dropper bottle full of water or 10% alcohol in the cup. And then you have to invert this frequency. The reason you have to invert the frequency is because dyskinesia of the colon is a disease. And so if it's a negative frequency, like a neg frequency of a disease, then you have to invert because you have to make it from negative to positive. And if you invert, you will see this little INV, three words at the top of the graph, and then you can click on start preparation and it will begin to write the frequency into the bottle. To make the frequency nice and strong, you can go ahead and click that start preparation about five more times to make it nice and strong in there. 
if you notice, it says here, graphs of medical preparations are recorded in an inverted form. What this means is that if you make a remedy for something like homeopathy, these are already inverted. You do not have to invert these. However, before making someone a remedy, make sure that you do the, fault, the same steps as you normally would. And if they're not available, then you need to click on Vigetto test and only give them the homeopathic remedies that are strengthening. And as you notice, there's a lot of different topics. There's topics in this list and there's many more. And if you want any additional topics, you feel free to use them but it's always important that you follow the same steps. You always have to choose a topic, click on the just all, then add a model, and then run a Vigetto test on anything that has a red dot. And only if it weakens, then you know that that is a confirmed analysis. Let's exit one more time and pick one more organ. So I'll choose the liver and show you the steps one more time. So you choose the organ, you click on the image, the graph, and then you will go through any topic. You will adjust. If it's above 1.2, you can just forget it and go to the next one. You will adjust, auto model, and then run Vigetto tests on anything with the red dot. And then the next one. Oops. This next one, Vigetto test. Once that finished, you're going to go to Analysis Plus and view the results by clicking Auto Research. Weakening by 8, dyskinesia of the gallbladder. Weakening by 10 is this other one. So now I'm going to exit and put these both in my notes because I have noticed that they are weakening. And so to view my notes, you go to Inapricasis report number two and you can see your notes. What you can also do is you can save your notes by clicking export and saving them as a PDF file to your computer or saving this one as a Word document to your computer. The other thing that I want to mention here is that if someone is interested or if you're doing a treatment, the best way to do a treatment is to go to the organ that needs help. Let's start with blood cells. Click on the image and then from this page, click on Meta Correction and give treatment with the headset on the head and click Start. What you'll notice is that during the treatment, these numbers are going to change and the energy will be higher. So go ahead and give about six treatments per organ. three. We'll do three more. One more.
And if you want to see the results of the treatment, click on the graph or the test button to move on and then go to Analysis Plus because that's where you're going to see all the results. To see the results correctly, check mark in the original scan, so look at the blood cells, check mark the box of the blood cells without anything after, that's the original scan, and then go to the very bottom and highlight the last treatment. And then you can see the correct result of the treatment. In this case, it strengthened the blood cells by 55% after doing meta treatment or meta therapy six times. So we can go back and choose another organ, let's say the liver, click on the image, click on meta correction, and give treatments. and then we can see the result. So again, remember that it's six treatments per organ and you do not want to exceed more than six. So no more than six treatments and no more than six organs per day. Now again, to see the results, click on the graph, click on Analysis Plus, find the original scan of the liver, so it's going to be at the top, here liver back view, go to the very bottom, highlight the last liver treatment, not checkbox, but highlight, and you see that the results are 26% after six metatherapy treatments on the liver. And that's the best way to do treatment. The other thing about treatment is that if you're going to treat someone, make sure that you treat, let's say that someone has digestive problems. And so what you can do is in one day, you can treat their intestine, their stomach, their colon, their pancreas, their liver, and maybe one other organ, anything that is around or that has to do with the digestive system. You don't want to treat random areas. You don't want to treat the foot and then the eye and then the liver because they're not connected and the treatments aren't going to be as effective. The treatments are more effective when you're treating areas that are all next to each other. The other thing I wanted to, to mention is that if you're interested in the aura, you always have to look at the aura choosing the body of woman. And so you're going to click on the image, click on the graph, and then if you go to the aura, you will see the correct aura response. And in this case, the aura seems to look pretty good, except for one dent, which is right here on the right side. Other than that, the aura looks pretty good. If the aura does not look great, you can exit exit again and then give treatment to, to the body of woman and then when you go back into the aura it will look corrected and be treated. The other thing I wanted to mention is that some people um, they look at chromosomes and there is a really good way to look at chromosomes but before I go there notice here that I have already made a card for myself so instead of making a new card to give myself another scan. I'm just going to click on research and that will take me straight to the page that I need to go in order to do a scan. So I will go to the very bottom right here and I can either scan the chromosomes by themselves 
which is fine. Let's just say that I will scan just five of these. Click on research. Okay, after scanning, I will go back to the card index and the newest scans are always going to be at the bottom and they're dated as well. So I'll just choose the first chromosome, click on the image, and here there's a little box that says text. If I click on text, I can move my mouse to a green little plus sign and it can tell me what the chromosome could be carrying or what could be going on in the chromosome. If you want to look at all of them at the same time, click on all text and it's all right there. That's a little confusing for me, so I just do one at a time. The other interesting um, thing you can do is if you go to research as if you're going to do a new scan, you can choose an organ Let's say that I'm going to look at something like this that actually has lots of organs in it. If you click on research, let me just scan this one organ. Let's say that you are curious about what else is in here. And if you click or if you just move your mouse, you see that these are like this is a kidney and there's a kidney here and there are some other cells and tissues in here you can just click on it and it can scan it because mine was already scanned it's just going to take me to the results but let's say my stomach just click on it and it will scan it for you because in, in everything that's here at the top of the list, those are our, our cross sections. And so there is a lot of other things that are within the one picture. And so that's why you have the options of scanning more. And then multi-line just basically gives, gives you the picture of the organs right next to their names. Okay, so we pretty much went over most of the important buttons in the system. You have to remember that when you're scanning someone, when you're scanning someone, make sure that you have the headset on, that it's connected. Because if you don't have the headset on, it will now it will not allow you to scan anything and it will also give you the error message. And so if you get the error message, it could be because you're not scanning. And remember that if you have, you know, a returning client, you cannot continue making new cards for them. You have to go to select card and select the card that you've already made for them and use that one. If you have any other questions or if you would like me to make more videos about something specific, please email us at info info at vectornls.com. Thank you.